You're watching Fox Local. A Fox 10 News alert a major road in north central Phoenix back open following a deadly crash. Let's get right to Dominic Newland. She is live at the scene, Cape Creek and Peoria Avenue. Good morning. The northbound lanes here at Cave Creek Road now back open for drivers. The southbound lane still closed off this morning, but all of this is due to a deadly collision that happened at around 1:30 this morning. Uh, we should have some video to show you. So we did get information from police recently, and what they were able to tell us was that a uh, when officers arrived, they found a man lying on the roadway with signs of trauma. Uh, the fire department responded. They were treated the man. However, he did die from injuries on scene. He was the one who was driving the scooter. Uh, the vehicle, the white car involved in this collision and the driver remained on scene, but detectives, they're still currently investigating this crash, how it happened. Right now, they're saying that impairment is not a factor, uh, but this crash, you can still see the scooter stuck in the grill of the front part of the car, really showing how severe the impact was. So due to all this, it caused a here at Cave Creek Road to be closed off for several hours, and most recently, a probably about uh, 20, 30 minutes ago, the northbound lanes just now reopening to traffic. Uh, so drivers are able to go on their morning commute. And yeah, all this happening once again, one here at 1.30 uh, near Cape Creek Road and Cheryl Drive. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Dominique, thank you so much for that. We'll see you in a few minutes with an update, of course. A Fox follow up now on the bat and infestation at an NAU dorm, forcing hundreds of students to move out and some even needed to be treated for rabies. A pretty wild story. The school says students will not be able to move back into that dorm until next school year. Now we're learning about where they're actually going to be going. So the students have reported seeing several bats flying in and around the Mountain View Hall for weeks now. NAU says bat, uh, a bat tested positive for rabies back in September and pest control contractor was called out as well to try and mitigate the problem. Earlier this month, all 550 students were moved out of the building. Many are now living at apartments close to the Flagstaff campus. They were sending us emails saying, uh, like, fluff out your blankets, check in dark spots in your room to make sure there's no bats. Like, and if you wake up and you were bitten to call, like, animal control. So that was a little, <laughs> was a little scary. That would be a little scary, right? Absolutely. As a Yikes. young college student. Mm -hmm. wow. Moving in with bats in your dorm. Well, this university says students will stay at apartments for the rest of the school year. The school's goal is to reopen Mountain View Hall beginning next school year. Well, the president of the Navajo Nation says his vice president has been removed from all responsibilities and is demanding she resign. Well, back in April, Vice President Rochelle Montoya accused the administration of intimidation and sexual harassment. As an independent investigation was taking place, Montoya further said President Bu Nguyen pulled her off duties and she ended up signing a recall petition in September. Uh, Nigren says the decision to pull her responsibilities is due to Montoya's failure to fulfill her obligations on time. Well, we have asked Montoya for a response. She directed us to a July memo where she accused Nigren of betraying the trust of the people. So, of course, this is not over. We will bring you an update as we receive it. Well, the Pima County, uh, in Pima County rather, the Republican candidate for sheriff has been placed on leave from the Pima County Sheriff's Department after an investigation into campaign activities while they were on duty. So, PCSD says last Saturday another deputy known to work for Heather Lapin campaign was seen holding a sign saying deputies don't want Nanos while in uniform. So that referenced Pima County Sheriff Chris Nanos. Now she admitted to knowing about the sign, which led to a further investigation. And in that investigation, they reportedly led them to finding out Lappin held a local reporter, uh, helped a local reporter rather pay an inmate in exchange for a story. Lappin confirmed her leave in a statement where she accused the current sheriff of attempting to suppress the opinions of herself and others. Now we have the full statement on our website, fox10phoenix.com, if you would like to see it. Big story here this morning, Glendale police expected to release more information this morning on what appears to be a murder-suicide. Investigators have confirmed the bodies of a man and a woman in their 20s. They were found yesterday afternoon. Family members had asked officers to perform a welfare check 
at an apartment near the Loop 101 and Union Hills. No details about either person have been released or maybe what had led up to the shooting, possibly. Details on that coming a little bit later too. Oh, a Flagstaff man who killed his wife earlier this year has been sentenced to 16 years behind bars. Patachowski pleaded guilty to second degree murder and other lesser charges. He had initially reported his wife Kelly missing, but was soon arrested and later helped police find her body for a plea deal. In court, family revealed that Kelly was going to divorce Patachowski. It was also revealed that he texted her mother on her phone to make it look like she was still alive. He also took their children to the lake to look for her. Phoenix residents are fed up with seeing shopping carts left in their neighborhoods. So now the city is proposing an ordinance requiring stores to install locking mechanisms on their shopping carts. And some stores already have this. You see them at some target locations and some grocery stores. It would also though install an electronic perimeter around their lots or they could face a fine. Currently residents can call the city to have abandoned carts picked up, but the city wants to find a way to prevent them from leaving store property uh, right there in the parking lot altogether. Security at one store had an estimated 50 carts stolen mm. over the past few weeks. As I come here, there's no carts. I'm like, damn, I can't do nothing about that. Yeah, sometimes you head to the grocery store and there aren't any carts, and this could be why. It won't be cheap, though. The Arizona Food Marketing Alliance, which represents retailers, says installation of the locking system alone costs $50,000, and maintenance can be up to ten grand a year. The city council expects to vote on this ordinance in a matter of months. And so there's an Arizona judge who rejected a petition to require counties to verify the citizenship status, that is, of 42,000 voters registered to vote in only federal races. The case was brought by an Arizona voter represented by a conservative legal group. The lawsuit argued the state had to check citizenship status based on a 2022 law, but the judge ruled the lawsuit did not make a case of harm and was brought too close to election day. The legal group says it will appeal the ruling. Well, we are now less than three weeks away from election day and early voting well underway here in Arizona. So if you would like to cast that early ballot, there are some key steps you have to follow. Danielle Miller live at the Maricopa County Elections Office with everything you need to know. Hi, Danielle. Hello, good morning. Yes, uh, the countdown is on to November 5th. It's going to be uh, very busy, I would say, especially for you, Jennifer, working with the elections office. So uh, as we know, early voting has already started. Kind of walk us through what do we need to know from here uh, leading up to Election Day? Well, we have 12 early voting locations where people can go into any vote center if they are a registered voter, voter in Maricopa County, and they can get that Election Day experience but not have to worry about the Election Day chaos. Um, you've also probably, if you're signed up for the early active voting list, received a ballot in the mail. So you can fill that ballot out at home, at your leisure, and then either return it via the Postal Service or you can drop it in a Dropbox. And Dropbox locations, where are they? And we have a map pulled up, so this is on their website. You guys can come on here, uh, look exactly where these locations are. So you said there's 12 vote in person, but those ballot drop off boxes, where are those at? Those are located throughout the county as well. And what you can do is come on to locations.maricopa.vote. They're all showing closed right now because they open at 9 a.m., but it will give you their hours of operation. You can search based on where you live or where you're going to be. You can use your current location. And what's so awesome is it will show you if there is a wait time. Um, every 15 minutes we update it. So Right now, we don't have wait times, but on Election Day, if there's a wait time at the one you're nearest, you can go to another one with just a couple miles away. Um, it is so easy to navigate, and the drop boxes are listed on here as well. In fact, you can um, really get in and hone in on what's closest to you. You just have to type in your Yes, you just type in your address, and, and it will show you where you can go. Um, customize your search you can find Dropbox only so these are our drop boxes uh, the open ones are outdoor ones that you can access or that are in a lobby of a city clerk's office that are that is open right now and then um, we have two here one here in downtown Phoenix and one in Mesa 
that's 24 7 so if you want to drop your ballot off for people who maybe work early like you do at five in the morning that drop box is available to you and so right now you can go to those vote centers and actually vote uh, yes. if you choose to do so and you guys are going to continue to roll those vote centers out until election day where all of them will be open then correct we do open them in waves because we don't have a need for um, all 246 vote centers that's how many we're going to have on election day serving voters and this year we've got a two-page ballot a lot of information we want to make sure people have the time they need to fill out their ballot so it will get printed off at a vote center you'll get your i voted sticker and you can be on your way and then you don't have to go on election day uh, and in terms of the the mail-in if i want to send it through the postal service when do i have to do that by October 29th is the last day that we recommend people put that in their mailbox. It gives us seven days for the post office to get us the ballot. If it's after October 29th, you can drop it at any drop box location. Uh, you cannot drop it off all the way up until 7 p.m. on Election Day, but we prefer people do it before that because all, obviously all those ballots that get dropped off on Election Day still need to go and be processed and tabulated. Um, and that takes a little bit of time and we want to get results as quickly as possible for these really important races. And if somebody did not receive their early ballot yet, what do they do? If they have not received their early ballot by Friday, they can log on and send an email to voter info. Well, I'm just going to give you the website because it's easier to remember. <laughs> Maricopa.vote. You can find contact information. They can let you know if you need to request a new one um, or you can call 602-506-1511. But uh, the post office is still delivering all of our 1.9 million ballots, so we just ask for a little bit of patience, wait a couple of days. If you still haven't received it by Friday, give us a call and we'll get it figured out. And even if you are not an early voter, you can still go to those locations to vote in person at those 12 locations. Absolutely. You okay. do not have to be an early voter, just a registered voter, and we'll get you all set up. We have poll workers who are ready to welcome voters. We're really excited for this big big election awesome jennifer get your sleep <laughs> working we on will it too yeah we're gonna need it and once again everybody if you are not registered to vote uh that deadline has already passed so you cannot register to vote uh, at this point so yes just check the website there's constantly updates and they're going to continue to roll out those voting sites all the way until november 5th when the election is going to be happening so thank you jennifer we appreciate it we'll send it back to you guys some great info there thank you daniel mm -hmm. and jennifer wealth of knowledge. Yeah, the, our election workers, they do work very, very Fantastic hard. Job. Uh, if you have any other questions about how you can vote, we have a QR code here on your screen. Maybe what is a part of that two-page ballot? There is at least 14 propositions. There's a lot of information to go through, and they will greatly impact um, how the cities and the states operate. You can scan that QR code there on your screen to learn more. It'll take you to our 2024 General Election Voter Guide. You can find that on fox10phoenix.com slash vote.